Skeptics claim Christians can't do real science because of their faith. And some believers say we don't need science, just faith. Do we believe six-day creation because of science or because of the Bible? Today on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. I'm Richard Fangrad. And I'm Thomas Bailey. Now, biblical creationists often hear objections on two fronts. Skeptics say you can't possibly do real science because right. you have an irrational belief in God. On the other hand, well-meaning believers occasionally say, why do we need scientific evidence? Yeah. Just believe the Bible. So are we biblical creationists because of the Bible or because of science? Both. That's, the, that's the short answer, right? <laughs> Now today we'll talk about how it makes perfect sense to believe the Bible, including a plain reading of Genesis, and do good science. Mm -hmm. Stephen J. Gould wrote, The net, or magisterium, of science covers the empirical universe. What is it made of? Fact. And why does it work this way? Theory. The magisterium of religion extends over questions of ultimate meaning and moral value. These two magisteria, he says, do not overlap. But is that really true? Now, it can be tempting to compartmentalize these two ways of looking at the world. We keep hearing about billions of years of evolution, which contradicts what the Bible says about a recent six-day creation. Yeah. So we might think, well, maybe Genesis is just about theology, but for origins, we need to look to science. Right. Yeah. At one time, I wondered if the Bible and evolution could somehow both be true. And I tried to keep science and faith from overlapping in my mind mm. by not thinking about it too much. So what happened? I heard a CMI speaker and found out that science <laughs> supports biblical history. Nice. That many people lose their faith by accepting evolution, which undermines the gospel. Yep. And that Christians need to have answers for people who doubt the Bible because of what they've heard about science. And a biblical creationist was born. <laughs> right on. <laughs> But the creation-evolution debate isn't about science. It's about history, mostly. Science involves things that can be observed and tested and repeated. History is about events that happened once and can't be repeated. For example, nobody alive today saw the Jerusalem temple get destroyed in 70 AD. Like, we can't run an experiment to test that event. But pretty much everybody accepts that it happened because of written history. That's right. But someone might say parts of the Bible can't be true because miracles don't happen. Mm, right. Well, how do you know that? How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> you may not have seen a miracle yourself, but that's no reason to dismiss the testimony of people who have seen miracles, yeah. like Moses or the apostles. As we explained last week, Christianity is not blind faith. That's right, yeah. For example, in 1 Corinthians 15, 3-8, Paul wrote, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then He appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then He appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Then down in verse 17, he says, And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. These are eyewitness accounts of the most important events in history. If they didn't actually happen, Christianity is meaningless. That's right. Well, what about creation? Hmm. Nobody witnessed that. Except, except God. God. <laughs> and he inspired Moses to write about it. Now, Moses likely also had access to written or oral accounts from people like Adam and Noah that got sure. passed down. Yeah. In any case, we trust the Bible because it's the Word of God, and it happens to be affirmed by eyewitnesses. It's historically accurate, so we should be able to trust what it says about other things as well. Right. Yeah, compare this to the Big Bang, followed mm -hmm. by billions of years of cosmic and then geological and then biological evolution. Again, we can't go back and run experiments on one-time events like stars forming or alleged cosmic inflation. And, and for this scenario, there were no eyewitnesses. <laughs> no. It's, it's really just a story speculating how everything got here without God. It also requires faith in miracles. 
yes. like a single-celled mm -hmm. organism rising spontaneously from non-living chemicals, known as abiogenesis. That's, that's a miracle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, some claim abiogenesis has nothing to do with evolution, but it has to be there as part of the overall narrative. Yeah. If there's no God, then everything, including life, must have created itself. Yeah, but scientific observations don't support that. No. I mean, natural processes, which, which we study scientifically, can explain how things are, but not how they got here. When we come back, we'll explore how science makes the most sense in a Christian worldview. Did you know that the Earth's magnetic field has reversed direction or flipped multiple times in the past? The evidence for these reversals is rock solid because when molten rock cools, certain mineral grains align with the Earth's magnetic field, thus recording the direction of the Earth's magnetic field at the time in the solidified rock. Previously, most geologists thought that a single reversal would take many thousands of years. However, creation physicist Dr. Russell Humphreys reasoned they must have happened quickly to fit within the biblical time scale. So Dr. Humphreys made a prediction that quickly cooling thin lava flows would be found that recorded fast changes in the direction of the magnetic field. This prediction was later proven correct. Scientists were shocked to find major magnetic field changes had occurred within weeks in a single lava flow. They published this in the regular scientific literature. Thus, yet another scientific prediction based on biblical history proved to be correct. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Welcome back. Does science make sense in a Christian worldview? Yes. Another great short answer. <laughs> but let's elaborate. Dr. Carl Whelan wrote a parable about two scientific fleas living inside a car. One insisted the evidence showed the car couldn't have been made by processes operating in the car. The other flea said science deals only with observable processes operating today. So proposing an unseen maker and a process of making that was no longer operating was unscientific. Okay. Even though it was true. Yeah. <laughs> now, this flea assumed the way the world works is the way it originated. And he even thought science developed by studying only present-day processes in the car. This made it impossible for him to logically deduce that someone had designed and created the car. Yeah. Now, creationists are often criticized as explaining away the unknowns about origins with God did it. It's right. God of the gaps, right? Now, ironically, that sort of thinking applies far more often to the evolutionist. Now, whenever they can't explain something, the answer is often, we don't know, but it must have happened naturally. No God, right? It's evolution of the yeah. gaps is what it is. Yeah. And that's actually a faith statement that ignores evidence for design and complexity everywhere in the universe. It's also limiting because no matter how strongly the evidence suggests, no miracles or creator are allowed. Mm, now, that's right. Another big problem for the naturalist is that the assumptions necessary to do science come from a biblical worldview, not an atheistic yeah. one. Let's consider some points about why science works. Number one, there is objective truth, and God is the source of truth. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, postmodernism claims truth is relative. Yes. What's true for you is not true for me. So let's jump off a cliff together and see if gravity is true for both of us. Get the answer pretty quick. <laughs> now, we can't run experiments or make conclusions unless we can verify facts. Yeah. If water boils at 100 degrees Celsius one day, 150 the next day, and then 90 the day after that, well, making tea would be a real problem. Yeah, and other things too. Yeah. But number two, the universe is real, which fits with the Bible because in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But many Eastern religions claim that the universe is an illusion. It's not real. Uh, there's, there's no point to running scientific experiments on an illusion. You don't get science that way. If you think boiling water is an illusion, try sticking your hand in it. Again, reality yeah, really, doesn't yeah. support that anyway. <laughs> the universe is orderly because God is a God of order, not confusion. Yes. Science involves deriving laws that provide predictable outcomes, which requires order. If the universe is just a big thought, as some Eastern religions claim, well, it could change its mind any minute. Right. <laughs> and why expect order if the universe was made by several gods like Zeus fighting each other, or if it made itself? Right, yes. Yeah. Number four, God is sovereign, free to create yes. as he pleased. Uh, the way to find out how his creation works is to investigate and experiment, not rely on man-made philosophies. 
Johann Kepler discovered the planets move in ellipses around the sun, while Greek philosophies had insisted on circles because mm -hmm. they're the most perfect shapes. Right. Now, that this didn't match the observations, so they added an increasingly complex system of circles upon circles called epicycles. Number five, people can and should investigate the world because God gave us dominion over his creation in Genesis 128, right. showing creation itself is not divine. Kepler referred to his own scientific thoughts as thinking God's thoughts after him. Yes, yeah, I love that. Number six, people can initiate thoughts and actions. Mm -hmm. The Bible affirms man is more than matter. In Matthew 10, 28, uh, Jesus said, and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So matter alone cannot explain things like consciousness and emotions. No. Evolutionist J.B.S. Haldane admitted, this is a lot of fun here, if my mental processes are determined wholly by the motions of atoms in my brain, I have no reason to suppose my beliefs are true. <laughs> and hence, I have no reason for supposing that my brain is composed of atoms. <laughs> <Good> point. <laughs> Yeah. Naturalism is a dead end, right? If naturalism is true, no one can be a free thinker. Right. Number seven, people can think rationally and logically, and logic itself is objective because yes. we were created in God's image. But we're not God, and we're in a fallen state due to sin, so we should never exalt our own reasoning above God. If evolution is true, that there'd be selection only for survival advantage, not necessarily rationality. Right. Number eight. Results should be reported honestly because yes. God has forbidden false witness. Mm -hmm. Now, if evolution is true, why not lie? Good point. Sad to yeah. say, scientific fraud has become an increasing problem. We've said before that it, it's not that atheists can't be moral, it's just that they have no objective basis for morality within their atheistic worldview. All of these assumptions needed to do science fit within a biblical worldview. Yes. And we'll be back in just a moment. Are you skeptical about Christianity? Perhaps you're a Christian but know someone who won't consider Christianity. Christianity for Skeptics is one of CMI's most popular books. Written by Drs. Steve Kumar and Jonathan Safati, this powerful resource refutes many attacks on the Christian faith. It contains cutting-edge research, solid theology, and a summary of the Christian roots of science. Questions about Islam, atheism, suffering, evidence for God, and more are answered. Full of bright, catchy illustrations and a sleek modern style, this book draws in any reader. Purchase this resource and many others at creation.com. Welcome back. Historians of science have noted the connection between Christianity and modern science. Dr. James Hannum wrote, During the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church actively supported a great deal of science. Recent research has shown that the, that, in, that the Middle Ages were a period of enormous advances in science, technology, and culture. The compass, paper, printing, stirrups, and gunpowder all appeared in Western Europe between 500 and 1500. So much for the, the so-called Dark Ages, right? <laughs> Good point. Science flourished even more after the Reformation. Professor Peter Harrison explains, had it not been for the rise of the literal interpretation of the Bible and the subsequent appropriation of biblical narratives by early modern scientists, modern science may not have arisen at all. In sum, the Bible and its literal interpretation have played a vital role in the development of Western science. Now, if the term literal interpretation there worries you a little <laughs> bit, consider a similar point made by uh, Stephen Snowblin, professor of history of science and technology, at the University of King's College in Halifax. He said, recent work on early modern science has demonstrated a direct and positive relationship to, between the resurgence of the Hebraic literal exegesis of the Bible in the Protestant Reformation and the rise of the empirical method in modern science. I'm not referring to wooden literalism, but the sophisticated literal historical hermeneutics that Martin Luther and others, including Newton, he said, championed. Mm -hmm. At CMI, we refer to this as a plain reading of Scripture. Right. Interpreting yeah. passages within the genre intended by the author, yes. such as poetry, parable, or historical narrative. Now, the Bible often uses figurative language not intended to be taken as wooden literalism, like okay. Jesus describing himself as the bread of life, right. whereas Genesis is historical narrative. Now, 
most of the founders of modern science were creationists anyway, such right. as Francis Bacon, Galileo Galilei, uh, Blaise Pascal, Robert Boyle, mm -hmm. Nicolaus Steno, and Sir Isaac Newton. Christians are often accused of being anti-science. Really? Yeah. But these scientists <laughs> were inspired to do science because of their faith. They were Christians. You see, they understood natural laws to be descriptions of the way God upholds his creation in a regular and repeatable way, yeah. as indicated in Colossians 1, 16 and 17. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And they also understood miracles as God's way of upholding his creation in a special way for special reasons. Mm -hmm. Since creation was finished at the end of day six, and creation was miraculous, the universe now operates according to natural laws. Since natural laws are descriptive, they don't limit what can or can't happen. Mm -hmm. Just because humans have discovered and defined various natural laws doesn't mean there can't be miracles. Right. Think of miracles as a, an addition to natural laws. The creator of those natural laws can add to them if he chooses. Sure. By changing the chemical pro properties of water to make wine, for example, or reversing the effects of disease. Yeah, now unfortunately, after this surge of scientific advancement came the so-called age of reason, or enlightenment, which exalted human reason to the point where God was supposedly no longer necessary. It's, it's yeah. really like the endarkenment, yeah. really. Uh, th this even affected the church as theologians began drifting away from biblical authority and started doubting the miraculous aspects of Scripture, including creation, which is a huge miracle, of course. In the 1800s, Long Ages geology and Darwinian evolution gained prominence to the point where naturalism has become the dominant worldview in the scientific arena. Yeah. <laughs> what a turnaround. Yes. <laughs> now, in 1908, G.K. Chesterton noted, Somehow or other, an extraordinary idea has arisen that the disbelievers in miracles consider them coldly and fairly, while believers in miracles accept them only in connection with some dogma. The fact is quite the other way. The believers in miracles accept them, rightly or wrongly, because they have evidence for them. The disbelievers in miracles deny them, rightly or wrongly, because they have a doctrine against them. <laughs> Interesting. In our time, many people have the impression that there are no creation scientists anymore. Mm. A question we hear is, do creation scientists publish in secular journals? Right. And the assumption is that they can't be real scientists unless they do. Several years ago, we put this question to physicist Dr. Russell Humphreys, who said, when people ask me this, I feel a certain amount of frustration because of the evolutionist brainwashing in our society, which it reveals. Firstly, it shows that the questioner is unaware of the large number of published professional scientists who are creationists. Yes. Using a simple statistical approach, I would conservatively estimate in the United States alone, there are around 10,000 practicing professional scientists who openly believe in six-day recent creation. Yeah, that's probably wow. surprising to most yeah. of you, right? Some of those contemporary creationists include highly respected scientists in their field, like geneticist Dr. John Sanford. Dr. John Baumgartner, a foremost authority in plate tectonics. Yeah. Dr. Stuart Burgess, for example, well known for his work in design. Dr. John Hartnett, an astrophysicist known for building the world's most accurate atomic clocks. And Dr. Raymond Domanian, who helped pioneer technology needed for the MRI machine. Wow. Now, not every scientific paper involves origins, but papers right. with creationist conclusions or even hinting at design are not likely to be published in journals that favor evolution. Yeah. That's why peer-reviewed journals like the Journal of Creation exist. But creationists do publish extensively in mainstream journals, and they've received their advanced degrees from the same institutions as evolutionists. Right, yeah. So, we'll be back with some other misconceptions about Christians and science. Many people think that the biblical flood of Noah was abandoned because of the evidence. However, history tells a different story. Modern geological thought owes much to a man named Charles Lyell. Lyell, a lawyer, published a book in 1830 called Principles of Geology. Described as a masterpiece of persuasion, it changed the way people thought about Earth's past. According to Lyell, we should only appeal to today's geological processes to explain Earth history. However, this approach meant that the global flood recorded in the Bible was automatically 
ruled out of consideration. Lyell wanted, he wrote, to free the science of geology from Moses. Regrettably, many people have uncritically adopted Lyell's philosophy without considering how Noah's flood can help us understand Earth history. Lyell changed the way many people think, but his approach was motivated by his anti-biblical philosophy. Indeed, it is very difficult to explain Earth's history without Noah's flood. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Welcome back. Today we're exposing the truth about creationists. <laughs> now, we've seen that a Christian worldview provides the basis for doing science, and it actually fostered the development of modern science. But there are still some misconceptions about Christians and science. In grade five, I read a, a story about Christopher Columbus supposedly uh, undertaking his voyage to prove that, to superstitious Christians that the earth was round, not flat. <laughs> okay. But what was taught to me as history was just a story made up by Washington Irving in The Life and Voyages of Christopher Columbus, published in 1828. 1828. Yeah. Columbus yeah. sailed the ocean blue in 1492. 1492. <laughs> Now, this is the same guy who wrote about a headless horseman in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and a 20-year nap in Rip Van Winkle. Not exactly documentaries. <laughs> the church had known for centuries that the earth yeah. is round, and no one worried about sailing mm -hmm. over the edge. Yet this fictional Columbus story was promoted by anti-Christians up to the point where many people accepted that that's what the church actually yeah. believed back in the day. But no, the church never taught a flat earth and if the Bible actually does teach a flat earth, godly Bible scholars throughout church history would have taught it too. That's right. The Bible doesn't teach it. And of course, today we can see, we can observe that it's a sphere. And for an extensive discussion on that topic, if you're interested, in, go to creation.com, refuting flat earth. Fast forward to the present, when evolutionary thinking is so entrenched that it's sometimes assumed evolution is necessary to do science at all. Yes. But is that really true? <laughs> no. In 2005, Dr. Mark Kirshner at Harvard Medical School said, In fact, over the last 100 years, almost all of biology has proceeded independent of evolution, except evolutionary biology itself. Molecular biology, biochemistry, physiology have not taken evolution into account at all. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. well, anti-creationist Larry Witham wrote something similar to that. Surprisingly, however, the most notable aspect of natural scientists in assembly is how little they focus on evolution. Its day-to-day -day irrelevance is a great paradox, he says, in biology. Yeah. <laughs> now, both men hoped evolution would one day be shown useful in experimental science. Right. But if anything, recent discoveries in molecular biology and genetics have made evolution less and less plausible, much less necessary. Yeah. But what about scientific consensus? I mean, maybe you've heard somebody say, well, how can all those scientists be wrong? Very easily. Yeah. Uh, they're humans. Right? <laughs> humans make mistakes. That's right. If a million people come to the same wrong conclusion, it doesn't, doesn't make it right. Consensus doesn't determine truth. All it takes is for one new discovery to overturn scientific consensus. And that's happened many times. Yeah. That's how science works. A great example is spontaneous generation. For hundreds yep. of years, scientists believed living things like rats and maggots just appeared out of non-living matter like rotting vegetables or meat. Over the years, scientists ran experiments to test the idea, and in 1861, biblical creationist Louis Pasteur's experiments conclusively showed that life only comes from life, yes. known as the law of biogenesis. The scientific consensus was wrong. Yeah, strange that uh, so many scientists today still believe life can come spontaneously yeah. out of nothing right. by itself based on naturalistic assumptions, not actual evidence. Now, there, there's a famous story of Galileo. Uh, you may have heard that the church at the time was anti-science because it opposed Galileo's assertion that the earth orbited the sun, but it was actually the scientific consensus of the yeah. day that insisted that everything revolved around the earth based on philosophical ideas from the ancient Greeks, not the actual observations. Now, the church opposed Galileo, not because scripture demanded it, but because they accepted the scientific consensus, which turned out to be wrong. Yeah. Now, there are many in the church today who are reinterpreting scripture because they've accepted the current scientific consensus about the Big Bang and evolution. Yes, now who knows when the next discovery will come along to overturn scientific consensus yet again. If you marry your theology to today's science, you might be widowed tomorrow. Hmm. 
Much yeah. better just to trust the Word of God. Right. But if we believe the Bible, why even bother with science? More on that after this. Creation Ministries International staff, many from a wide variety of scientific disciplines, have produced thousands of articles now available in a massive online database. Some of the topics covered include the feasibility of Noah's Ark and evidence for a global flood, scientific arguments that explain observations in astronomy within a young Earth time frame, recent discoveries that support dinosaurs fitting with biblical history, evidence from biology that shows that the type of change that is observed in living things has absolutely nothing to do with evolution. Got questions? Get answers at creation.com. And we're back. Christianity and science go together without any need for billions of years. Right. But when we're trying to reach people for Jesus, isn't the Bible enough on its own? Mm. After all, the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it's up to the Holy Spirit to draw people to Christ. Now, ultimately, we can't argue anyone into the kingdom. So why bother with evidence? That's the question. Well, in Matthew 22, 37, Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. With all your mind, yeah. Just, right. Just like the founders of modern science, we ought to be able to examine the world God created and explain their observations in the light of Scripture. Right. With so much evolutionary bias in the scientific community, Christians sometimes uh, just don't want to go there. They end up saying, well, just have faith. But 1 Peter 3.15 tells us to always be prepared to make a defense to anyone right. who asks you for a reason for the hope that's in you. And 2 Corinthians 10.5 reads, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Children are so bombarded with evolutionary thought that many are turning away from what they've heard in church because they believe science has disproven the Bible. Yes. Yep. A study by the Barna Group released in 2018 said, Nearly half of teens on par with millennials say, I need factual evidence to support my beliefs, 46%. From the same study, 49% of church-going teens say, The church seems to reject much of what science tells us about the world. As believers, our authority should be the Word of God. Yeah. But ignoring science altogether opens the door for atheists to present their, their case for evolution, which may sound reasonable to those mm. who've never heard scientific support for biblical creation. Right. Just a little evidence for biblical creation can help people realize that the Bible is true and draw them closer to believing the gospel. Yeah. Street evangelist and pastor Russell Wallace wrote about a young man named Danny who no longer believed in God like he used to. Hmm. Danny had already discarded the intellectual aspects of his faith because of his exposure to the constant barrage of evolution in school. He had no answers to defend his faith. Now, Wallace shared some evidence that the Bible can be trusted and answered some of his questions. I could tell he was thrilled he could believe in God again. He added, you gave me reasons to abandon my doubts. Wonderful. That. Yeah. Sometimes we hear uh, church leaders say, but our congregation already believes in creation. Great. That's yeah. great. <laughs> but what about the people that they know who don't? And is everyone in your church equipped to answer their questions? That's why CMI exists and, yes. and why we do this show. Our mission is to support the effective proclamation of the gospel by providing credible answers that affirm the reliability of the Bible, in particular, its Genesis history. That's right. We'll see you next week. And remember, Christianity is an evidence-based faith. And science supports Scripture.